Welcome everybody to this care collab of the Dendrobium berry Oda. Today I am teaming up with Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents and with Honeybees and Orchids. I thought I would just open the video with a real good look, close-up look into the blooms that we have because it is quite incredible to even try and put this into shot in a proper way so I'm hoping that <laughs> the size of this orchid can be appreciated. It is enormous, but it is also very, very easy to grow. There is not much that is needed to be done for a berry odor. It is easy to grow as a regular house plant if you don't have an outdoor environment, but if you have an outdoor environment and the temperatures go low, maybe down to zero even, this orchid can live outdoors. I wouldn't push the zero freezing degree mark for too many days and nights, but it can definitely handle it. It is also not a must to have these kind of temperature differentials to get it to bloom. My temperature here in the winter, it goes down to five degrees Celsius and she's outside all year round. The only thing that I do sometimes to change the location is because the summer sun gets a little bit too hot and there's sometimes not enough breeze to cool the leaves down. So I do move her into a more shaded area in the summer where she can recover, but has plenty, plenty of bright light. And that is important for this orchid to be happy and to bloom vigorously. Because as you will see, the other angle of this orchid that I took initially as a video shows you where her major light source was for the majority of the time. I don't like to turn my orchids because I don't want the growth to grow wonky. I have a specific target that I want my orchids to grow somewhat contained in the pot and not have growth growing out and spilling over. In this case with the berry odor, that's pretty easy to do, to be able to grow them upright because that is her natural growth habit. So that helps. But if I were to constantly turn her, then the angle of the leaves would also change, always looking for the light, which will make the orchid look really disheveled in the presentation sense, if that makes sense. So I always make sure that the direction is the same. When I take her, take care of her and put her back in her place, her angle and direction of position is always the same so that the leaves don't start doing all the fancy yoga stuff. And then pretty quickly, this orchid can look a little bit unruly, maybe not from the canes growing out, but the way the leaves will behave during its growing period. Love this orchid. Can't say much more about it. Bye. No, just kidding. <laughs> oh, I can say a lot more about this orchid despite the fact that it is so easy to grow and it is so rewarding to have in the home. Let me just go into some of the nerdy stuff about this orchid. So she's a cross between the Kingianum and the mini pearl. The parents of the mini pearl are Canaliculatum and Vigibum. And the berry Oda was first registered in 1983 by Mr. M. Oda. O-D-A, not Oda fragrance because that's the next thing about this one. Oh, the fragrance is divine. Mainly, mainly heavy in the morning and late afternoon when the hottest part of the day is over, I get a sweet, heavy honeysuckle. I would say maybe just honey, but it is sweeter than just honey. But a heavy honeysuckle is what the fragrance is of this orchid. And I can tell you, I smell her from the terrace where she lives all the way into the living room. I know exactly who's playing outside in my blooming alley when it is the right time and when she does send out her perfume. So Mr. Oda, not odor, registered her. The blooms themselves individually do not last that long. In my climate here in Southern Spain, I get around a week out of an individual bloom. But because the orchid is constantly throwing out new buds, eventually, the buds will stop and you only have X amount on the spike. So it's not a sequential bloomer, but the fact that she throws out so many blooms on a single spike 
It can be up to nine, maybe 10 per spike. It gives this orchid the impression that it's very, very long lasting in its blooming phase. And that is a little bit deceptive because the individual blooms, in my case, last about a week. But in general and overall, this orchid is in bloom for about two and a half months easily, especially this time of year when we're in mid-March where it's not that hot yet. So the only reason she's right now out in the direct sun is because I'm filming her and I thought it would be prettier to see her with my silver bush in the background in the bloom and my calumnias over there. But now she lives in my blooming alley on the shelf that you see in the picture because there she gets a lot of dappled sunlight, but not the pounding direct sun as we are getting today, which is lovely, no complaints, because I don't want her leaves to burn. Her preferred temperatures are five degrees to 24 degrees Celsius. But I can tell you that this orchid is so hardy, so robust. It wants a lot of humidity where it comes from there in Australia, but I'm telling you, I have no humidity to speak of in my climate and she's still doing fabulously. So there's no reason to think that you can't take care of this orchid unless you pull in all the factors, including humidity. I would say you can see by the result she doesn't need all that in order to thrive, but what she does need is a lot of light. And for that reason, I have her in the winter on my east side, where the angle of the sun when it rises in the winter is immediately on top of her for as long as the sun is out, which could be four hours, it could be six hours. And yes, my leaves go a little bit burgundy because of the anthocyanin, but that is not a problem, she can handle it. What she cannot handle if she's constantly, constantly drenched with water if she's not in active growth. In my method, you can see I'm doing it with a self-watering setup. So am I contradicting myself or what's going on? I have this setup because of my dry summers. I have to go by worst case scenario. And by worst case scenario is that seven to eight months of the year, I have no humidity to speak of. And she is very, very thirsty. She has a lot of storage canes, but I don't want those storage canes to be used in order to keep her happy. I want to be the one that keeps her happy. And for that reason, she gets a lot, a lot of water. Even in the winter, she can get rained on. I flush her regularly. What she doesn't get in the winter is a lot of fertilizer, but I do not stop watering this orchid. There is no winter rest for this one. As far as I'm concerned, you don't get a flowering like this just because you've winter rested the orchid. This one, in my opinion, does not need a winter rest. She gets a lot of water, and if I've watered her and then the forecast changes and she gets rained on, then she gets that as well. So sometimes the watering can double up based on who's doing what, me and then the weather. But the fertilizer I do pipe down in the winter. If she is in active growth, like you can see here, these canes, are winter growths and they're going to be a little bit stunted but there's nothing I can do about it if I chuck more fertilizer at her in winter she's not going to use that because I've got less daylight in order to help them grow it doesn't matter they're just a little bit smaller they will bloom eventually but that is the result of less daylight and not the result of less fertilizer which in my case in the winter is 160 parts per million and trust me she drinks that up despite it being cooler and wetter, she will empty her reservoir. And then in the summer, once she's finished blooming, I'm just going to give her like a month of just continuous flushing, let her roots recuperate, let it all warm up, and then I will resume fertilizing, but at 300 parts per million, because it doesn't take her very long to get going again. Every growth that I had during the winter is now maturing. This is another one right here. So there's no active growth in the pot at the moment. It's bloom time, baby. Ah, yes, here, let me show you. You see how red my leaves are getting? Well, this is from the winter. This is not from now because she's been in my blooming alley so I can appreciate these blooms. But this is fine. They're not burned, they're not stressed. It's not cold damaged. This is how much light I pump at her during the winter in order to get this spectacle. And if you're growing this orchid indoors in your house as a house plant, she can take direct sun, but you have to make sure that she gets 
plenty, plenty, plenty of light so as to get blooms coming out of her in such abundance. Don't be shy about the amount of light and don't worry if the leaves are going somewhat red. One thing is if you touch the leaves and they feel hot to the touch, that is too much sun. Especially if you're behind glass, just keep an eye on the leaves. But in general, she can have as much light as you can throw at her to bloom like this. There's one thing I have to admit about this orchid though is the aphids. And that is my major, major pest problem with this orchid. When it is a little bit wet and damp still during the winter months, while she is developing her spikes and buds, I get little green aphids. And what I do, uh, yes, and I've suffered for it, but what I do is take my sprayer and put the nozzle on harsh and, and try to spray the aphids off because there's too many that would interfere. There's too much that I would need to spray. So I end up losing some bud because I've been blasting the spike as they were growing, just with plain water to keep the aphids away, to keep a little bit of the sticky sugary substance off my spikes because that attracts the aphids. I don't want this one to be taken down if I lose 10, 15 blooms because I'm doing that. I'm happy by doing that as opposed to not getting many blooms at all and it looking a little bit rackety because it's covered in aphids. In my climate, this is also very amazing. I've seen it attract butterflies. I've had quite a few butterflies on my berry odor, but every time I get up to take a picture, they fly away. But if you want to say they attract pollinators, yep, we've had a bee on her, and yep, it does attract butterflies. I think that is just the most beautiful thing ever. And if I'm ever so lucky to be able to capture that, the butterflies around this orchid with the blooms, I will definitely post that clip as a short for sure. In general, not a difficult orchid to grow. Is that easy for me to say? Possibly here in Southern Spain, yes. But if I give you the temperature bracket and you look at your own climate, you can grow this one outside all the way easy up to November, December, especially in the Northern hemisphere of Europe, and then bring her back out again, keep her outside from probably February, March starting and she'll be happy, happy for it. Direct sun in the winter, by those cool temperatures, no problem. Let her get rained on. It could be cold rain, no problem. In general, this orchid is not a problem. And she is a beast. Not only does she grow vigorously when it comes to new growth, she also chucks out keikis. She's not a shy one when it comes to keikis, which I think is absolutely wonderful. And the keikis themselves, are also very, very active and quickly to grab a hold and start off on their own. Look at this little keiki. Came from the mother plant maybe six months ago and is blooming all of her own accord as well. Easy peasy, so rewarding. And you can see that if I have a pest that is trying to attack something, it would be the moth larvae, but I've dealt with that. But these are the two keikis that I put in the pot initially, and they grew up into these two big canes. And now look at them, they're blooming. Six months, and that is during the winter. So not only is this orchid abundant in its own right, but it's generous as well, and what is not to like? There's a little quirk as well that I want to point out. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you haven't seen this before yet, but you can see here, this is a spike right here, blooms, but it's also a keiki. And that is normal. You can see it's growing its own roots. It does that as well. <laughs> a classic, a must have, a keeper. No fuss, pure joy, and a vigorous, vigorous grower. I am hoping that this care collab has helped, has entertained, or has answered any questions you may have about Dendrobium berry odor in a self-watering setup with LECA, no winter rest care, and the result here. And I also want to thank Fernanda Nacimento, Orchids and Succulents, as well as Honeybees and Orchids for joining me on this care collab. Last year, I did a care video of my Dendrobium berry odor all by my lonesome, this year, how times change, I have company and I love it. Thank you so very much to the two channels 
for taking the time, for supporting the concept, and for doing their videos, which I have linked in the description below. Initially, I link the channels, and then when I see the videos come up, then I will update those links with the actual video of the Care Collab pertaining to Barry Oda. So if you want to have a look-see as to how a Barry Oda is being grown elsewhere, there's two more options in the description. And before I finish, let me just add one more thing, please. If you're doing videos, if you own a Barry Oda, if you want to join in on this Care Collab initiative for future updates on this orchid, please feel free to email me. I have my email address in the description below. Shoot me an email, let me know you want in. I will put you on the list when we do updates on this orchid, depending on whose is doing what and when. Thank you so very, very much for tuning in. Thank you for watching, for commenting, for liking. And if you think other people would benefit from this video, thank you for sharing. I really appreciate all of that. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.